Good day, this is Rona from Rona IT. IT infrastructure can be expressed as SSSC. The first S is the server for calculation, and the second S is the storage to store data. The third S is a switch that connects servers and storage to communicate. The final C is cloud, which can be said to be a resource pool in which the servers, storage and switches mentioned above are virtualized and automated. By understanding these four things, you can also understand the big picture of IT infrastructure. Here is a typical configuration consisting of servers, storage and switches. If you look at the middle part here, there is a server first, and there is storage under the server, and there is something called a SAN switch that connects the server and storage. And at the top of the server, there is also an Ethernet switch for connection to other servers, which is connected to a router for communication with the outside world. And at the top is a client, in other words, a user who requests services from this server. In the past and still today, this configuration of servers, storage and switches was common. However, these IT infrastructures are evolving to become virtualized and automated and operate as a single resource pool. In this case, it can be called a cloud. This is what has already happened, now and in the future. Next, I will explain each server, storage, switch and cloud. First, it is a server for calculation purposes. First, if we look at servers externally, there are tower types, rack-mounted types, and blade types. The tower type is a type that can be placed on an office desk rather than mounted on a rack, and can be said to be used in small offices or home use rather than for corporate use. Next, it is a rack-type server that is mounted on a rack. Because the rack-type server is installed in a rack about two memeters high, it is shaped like a thin plate, and this is the typical form of a corporate server. Lastly, there are blade servers. If a rack-type server is horizontal, a blade server is vertical, and this vertical blade server is inserted into a case, and this case is mounted on the rack. Although the rack type is often used in corporate IT environments, this blade type is also sometimes used in corporate IT environments because it is ultimately mounted on a rack. Let's learn more about rack-mounted servers. Rack-mounted servers are mounted on a rack, so they have the same horizontal length, but are divided into sizes depending on height. Depending on the number of CPUs, memory, disk capacity, and expandability installed in the server, it takes the form of 1U, 2U, and 4U servers. This U unit indicates how many units it takes up when mounted in a rack, since one rack is 40U. The most commonly used rack type server is the 2U server. If you look at the rack picture on the right, you can see that devices such as servers, storage and switches are tightly packed in the rack. Among rack servers, 2U and 1U servers are the most widely used, so those servers are produced by numerous server companies. In the case of 2U servers, up to two CPUs are usually installed, and companies such as Hewlett Packard, Dell, and Lenovo produce them under their own model names. Even in the case of a 1U server, up to two CPUs are installed, but since the internal space is smaller than that of a 2U server, there is not enough space to install memory, disks, I.O. cards, etc., so scalability is lower than that of a 2U server. 1U servers are also produced and sold by server companies such as Hewlett Packard, Dell, and Lenovo under their own model names. This is the inside view of the server. This is what you can see when you remove the top case of the server. You can see space for two CPUs, memory, disk, power supply, and PCI cards. The internal space of a server can be basically similar to that of a PC or laptop computer used at home. The main components that make up a server are CPU, memory, and disk. CPU stands for Central Processing Unit and is a device for calculations. Memory is a device for high-speed short-term data storage and disk is a device for long-term storage. Enterprise CPUs continue to evolve into the first, second, third, and fourth generations. Disk technology continues to evolve from hard disk drive 
to solid state disk and NVMe. What is a server? A server is conceptually a computer that provides services to clients or users. Additionally, since it is used for corporate purposes, it provides stability along with high performance. For example, let's say I'm shopping online. I will use my laptop computer running Windows 10 to access an online shopping website and make a purchase request. The computer of the internet shopping company that receives and processes this purchase request is the server. This server will be a high performance and stable server computer equipped with the Windows Server 2022 operating system and Intel Xeon CPU. Only then will we be able to provide services to numerous clients' requests 24 hours a day. Let's learn about server management. Unlike home computers, which are operated in ordinary homes, corporate servers are operated in a space called IDC. IDC stands for Internet Data Center and can be said to be a special building exclusively for servers. IDC has numerous racks packed into a space that maintains appropriate temperature and humidity. IDC has air conditioning equipment for temperature control and various facilities to stably provide power, and numerous corporate IT infrastructure devices are managed in this environment. One of the technologies required for server stability is HA, or high availability. No matter how stable the server is, if it is running for 365 days, there will be times when it does not work for any reason. In this case, HA causes another server next to it to operate instead of this server. There are two methods of HA, the first is active and standby methods. In other words, two servers perform the same task, and among them, one server becomes active and runs, and the remaining server is called standby, so it just waits without responding to service requests. Then, when the active server stops operating, the standby server takes on the active role and responds to the service. Of course, you can check the original server that has stopped working in the meantime and restore it to normal condition. The second HA method is active-active method. Typically, three or more servers all take on the active role and respond to service requests at the same time. Even if there are a lot of service requests, performance will be excellent as multiple servers handle them one by one. And even if one of three or more servers does not work, there will not be a big problem if the remaining two servers perform the service. However, the active-active method requires more complex HA technology and costs more money to maintain. Next is DR, or disaster recovery. HA, which was explained first, means that even if one server fails, other servers next to it take over. However, there are cases where the entire IDC, where servers are located, may suffer serious damage due to fire or earthquake. In this case, HA is of no use. So, we are preparing a server for this at another remote IDC. Even if all servers operating in HA fail, the DR server in the remote IDC will operate. Disaster recovery goals are often discussed in relation to DR. There are things called RPO and RTO. RPO is the recovery point objective, which is the goal of recovering how much data from the previous time before the disaster occurred in the event of a disaster. This is because data cannot be replicated continuously from the main IDC to the remote DR IDC 24 hours a day. For example, if the RPO is one hour, it means that data up to one hours before the disaster can be recovered. RTO is recovery time objective, which means how many hours after a disaster occurs, the server at the remote DR center will perform the same service request. An RTO of four hours means that the remote DR server can operate normally about four hours after a disaster occurs. This is because when a disaster occurs, and the servers of the main IDC are damaged, it is quite difficult for the DR server to immediately take over that role. Next is the middle worry. Middle worry is a component that lies between hard worry and soft worry. Hard worry is the server and software is the application. What lies in between is a hypervisor 
and an operating system, or OS, for virtualization. This middleware must run on the server, and the server cannot operate without this middleware, so the server and middleware essentially move as one body, and for this reason, middleware is often bundled with servers in an OEM manner. OEM means that the server company sells not only the server, but also middleware and provides technical support. A common hypervisor for virtualization is VMware's vSphere, or ESXi. OSEs include Linux, Unix, and Windows, and the most common OS for enterprise use is Red Hat Linux. Next, let's look at storage, which allows you to store and utilize data. What is storage? Storage is literally a space that allows you to store data. Storage can be likened to a refrigerator that stores water and food. The server is a person, and the storage is a refrigerator. Just as a person puts food in the refrigerator and takes out water to drink, the server stores data in the storage, retrieves the stored data, uses it, and sends it to other servers. Just as refrigerators have been divided into refrigerators for various purposes, such as home use, industrial use, and wine use, there are many different types of storage. Basically, it can be thought of as storing data so that the server can utilize it. So what does storage look like? Because the storage is also mounted on a rack, there is not much difference in appearance from a server. However, if there are a lot of disks installed on the front, it is most likely storage. Technology for disks installed in storage continues to develop in the following order, HDD, SSD, and NVMe. There is also HA, high availability technology, to prevent loss of data stored in storage. This technology is called RAID. RAID has different numbers, such as 0, 1, 2, and 3, depending on how it is implemented. The larger the number, the more complex the implementation. In fact, we recommend that you only need to understand the basic concepts of RAID and do not look into more technical details. This is because storage manufacturers prevent data loss anyway with the best RAID method they have developed. Next is the switch. The switch serves to connect and communicate with each IT infrastructure component, such as servers and servers and servers and storage, either wired or wirelessly. The switch has the following external appearance. There are wired switches and wireless switches. A wireless switch is commonly called an AP or access point. We also have these wired and wireless switches at home. Usually there is one AP rented from a telecommunication company, so wireless communication is carried out at home with a mobile phone or laptop. On top of these APs, there is a wired switch where each home's APs are connected. There are other terms for these network switches, Ethernet switch, Tor switch, L2 switch, etc. In fact, you can understand that they are almost the same term. In the case of wireless switches, they are appropriately attached or placed in the home or office, but in the case of wired switches, they are often located in racks, like servers and storage. As you can see in the picture, it is often located at the top of a rack that contains servers and storage. In the case of wired switches, copper cables and optical fiber cables are largely used to connect devices such as servers and storage with cables. Copper cables are the basic type that have been used for a long time, and optical fiber cables use optical fibers to transmit signals through light rather than electrical signals and are faster than copper cables and enable high capacity communication. In the case of optical cables, the process of converting electrical and optical signals to each other is essential, so a GBIC module is required for this. GBIC modules are also called SFP modules. The following are the specifications of the network card that enables network communication. 1G, 10G, 16G, 25G. These standards are speed. The larger the number, the faster the communication speed. Then, you need to insert a cable into the slot of this card and plug in the RJ45 copper cable or SFP module of optical cable at the end of the cable. 
Next is the cloud. It is easiest to understand the cloud if you think of it as basically a virtualized resource pool. Resources refer to IT resources such as servers and storage. This is the picture I showed you first. This is a configuration in which servers, storage and switches are traditionally connected. When the components, servers, storage and switches, are virtualized and operate as a single resource pool, this is also cloudized. Because the cloud is closely related to virtualization, it is also consistent with the concept of SDDC. SDDC is a concept called Software Defined Data Center, which means a software defined or virtualized data center. SDDC consists of SDC, SDS, and SDN, which stand for Software Defined Compute, Software Defined Storage, and Software Defined Network, respectively. This means that the server, storage, and network are virtualized and the overall data center is also virtualized and software defined. This is a cloud-like concept, not as individual elements, but as a pool of resources combining all of them, allowing users to use resources as needed. I told you that the concept of cloud is a collection of virtualized and automated servers, storage, and networks. Most people have a vague understanding of the cloud, but they often cannot explain it well. In this case, it would be helpful to refer to the approximately three-minute video shown below. It makes it easy to understand public cloud, private cloud, and hybrid cloud, and tells you what criteria to choose based on. Nowadays, many things around us take on the form of clouds. The important thing is to choose the cloud that best suits you. Public cloud is a service where you pay for the amount you use, and in a corporate IT environment, it is convenient to use for everyday tasks such as email, CRM, HR, and collaboration. Rather than managing the applications you use every day yourself, it is better to use them in the form of a public cloud. Private cloud can be seen as a change from the traditional IDC that a company already has to be more cloud-like. It was virtualized and automated to operate as a resource pool. It is recommended to use the private cloud for the company's original business competitiveness, such as research and development, production management, ERP, analysis, and statistics. Hybrid cloud is a mix of public and private clouds. Public cloud is better when scalability is important, and private cloud is better when control is important, so it is recommended to mix the two criteria. Let's summarize the concept of cloud. Cloud virtualizes and automates servers, storage, switches, etc., and uses them as a resource pool. To achieve this, it will be necessary to design, build, and operate the cloud according to its intended use. Cloud selection criteria include scalability and control. You can use the cloud that best suits you based on your selection criteria. Thank you for listening and I'll see you again.